An English scientist, James Joule, conducted an experiment, from which he found out the relationship between heat, work, and the energy contained in a system. In his experiment, he took a vessel full of water, and fit a thermometer inside it. He then measured the temperature of the water before starting the experiment, as T1. Then, he put a small fan inside the water. The fan was connected to a rope, such that if he pulled the rope, the fan would start to spin. And the rope, was tied to a hanging weight. The vessel containing water, was then insulated, so that no heat escapes. He then allowed the weight to fall, causing the fan to spin. By connecting the rope to a known weight, and by measuring the distance fallen by the weight, Joule could calculate how much work was being done, using the gravitational potential energy, mgh. After the weight fell down, and the fan stopped spinning, Joule noticed that the temperature had increased, and was now T2. Now, he removed the insulation, and allowed the water to cool down, by letting the heat escape to the surroundings. The temperature, came down to T1 again. From his experiment, Joule understood, that the work done in spinning the fan, had increased the temperature of the system, from T1 to T2. He also understood, that the heat loss to the surroundings, was reducing the temperature, from T2 to T1. So he concluded, that the amount of work done, was equal to the amount of heat lost. Since the system was returned to the initial state at the end of the experiment, this is considered a cyclic process. Also, since only the mass of the system is not exchanged with surroundings, it is considered to be a closed system. So in formal definition, for a closed system in a cyclic process, the amount of work done on the system, is equal to the amount of heat lost. Or in cyclic integral form, the cyclic integral of dW, is equal to J times the cyclic integral of dQ. Where J is a constant, called Joule's constant. Since the work done was being stored in the system, as an increase in temperature, Joule concluded that this was another form of energy, which he called internal energy. So if the temperature, was not allowed to reach the initial value of T1, then, there was some energy remaining in the system, which did not escape as heat. In formal definition we say, for a closed system in a non-cyclic process, all the heat energy given to a system, is converted into internal energy, and work done. Or, Q minus W is equal to delta U. This laid the foundation for the first law of thermodynamics. Since temperature was the only thing changing as he conducted the experiment, he also concluded that internal energy, was proportional to the temperature. Or in other words, the change in internal energy, which represents whatever additional energy was stored in the system, was proportional to the change in temperature. Or, delta U is equal to K into delta T, where K is the constant of proportionality. By doing experiments, later scientists were able to discover that this constant of proportionality, is equal to MCV. Where M is the mass of the system, and CV is the specific heated constant volume. So the change in internal energy, is calculated as MCV delta T. Combining this statement with his other discovery, which resulted in the first law, we get, Q is equal to MCV delta T plus W. Or, Q is equal to MCV, into T2 minus T1, plus W. For some systems like steady flow, we look at the enthalpy, not just the internal energy, in order to get a more complete idea. There, the first law of thermodynamics, becomes Q is equal to delta H, plus W. Enthalpy is defined as U plus PV. But U is MCVT, and PV is equal to MR specific T, by ideal gas law. Simplifying this, we get, H is equal to MCPT. Or, delta H is equal to MCP delta T. And correspondingly, the first law becomes, Q is equal to MCP delta T plus W, or Q equals MCP, into T2 minus T1, plus W.